What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? We are talking about 20 live loop tips for GarageBand 2.1. Now, here's the interface running on my iPad Pro. The iPad Pro really is the ideal device for GarageBand. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and create a new song, and then I'm going to choose live loops, not the traditional tracks option, but live loops at the top. And then you're going to see all these various templates here, these pre-built templates that have some uh, loops already pre-filled. You see dubstep, R&B, house music, chill, rock electro funk all sorts of stuff you can even create your own blink template which we're going to get to later i'm going to show you that so stay tuned i promise you but right now let's check out the hip-hop template and let's just start from the very top in this video i'm going to show you why garageband 2.1 is so powerful and why you should be using it especially if you own an ipad pro so let's get started shall we how to play a loop all you do is just tap on a loop like this to start playing it to stop playing it, just tap the loop again, or press the stop button. You can also play multiple loops together to create a more complex sound. And for the most part, the loops stay on beat. So you can combine multiple loops to create a pretty cool sounding beat, like this. Let's add something else. Let's add this one right here. And when you're ready to stop it all, just press the stop button. Loops versus non-loops. You can tell the difference between a looping loop and a non-looping loop by the icon that represents the sound. The circle icon represents a looping loop and the straight line icon represents a loop that only plays once, just like this. This is a looping loop. So once it gets back around to the end, it will continue playing again and again and again and again. Continuously. All right, now let's play the non-looping loop, represented by the straight line going across. And you'll notice it just abruptly stop at the end. Like that. So looping loops versus non-looping loops. Non-looping loops go straight across, and looping loops go in circles. Zooming and moving. To move around the live loops grid, just swipe up and down on the left side near the instruments, or you can use a pinch gesture right there near the instruments to zoom in as well. Now, you can also zoom in via the columns at the bottom of the screen, but if you really want more precise pinch to zoom right there on the interface, you want to go into edit mode like this, and then you can use pinch to zoom right there on the main grid to zoom in and move around just like that. Using the edit mode method is by far easier and more efficient than trying to zoom in and move manually using the sidebars. So get used to using edit mode. How to play a column. Now within the live loops interface, you can of course tap on individual loops like this one at a time and play them all in sync together. But you can also just tap on the little column button at the bottom of the screen to play all loops in a column at the same time. Definitely more efficient. You can use this method to come up with some pretty cool sounds quickly. What do you think? Pretty cool, huh? Volume, solo, and mute. You can quickly adjust the volume for a row or solo or mute a row using the Live Loops interface. Let me show you how right now. Just swipe over using the drag handle, like this, to reveal the inspector for individual tracks or rows. So if you tap solo, you can solo an individual row. You can unsolo, adjust volume, Increase volume, decrease volume like that. You can mute individual rows as well. 
like this and really tailor the sound, especially handy when you're recording a song. Okay, so now let's talk about renaming a column or instrument. Renaming can be handy when you need to give specific names to a particular instrument or column. Just double tap on the instrument in a row and then tap rename and then give it your custom name, just like that. Now, when you wanna rename a column, things are a little different. You actually have to go into edit mode. You can go into edit mode for either, but for columns in particular, you have to go into edit mode, tap on the column button, and then tap rename, and you can give it a name like that. Moving rows. Moving rows does not require you to go into edit mode. All you need to do is tap and hold on the instrument and drag the row, just like this, to your desired location. Super easy to do. Just like that. Importing loops. As you might imagine, this is a pretty important part of using live loops. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a brand new song and we're going to create a song from scratch using the Blink template. So we're just gonna select new and here's our Blink grid template. So there's actually two ways to import loops. You can tap on the little loops browser at the top upper right hand corner and view all your loops or you can just add a new loop just by tapping the plus button on a row and you'll get the same browser. So either way works. Here's the loops browser. You can see all the loops there, but there's actually more loops than that available. If you tap reset keywords, you're gonna see more loops. There are almost 1400. You can use the keywords at the top to drill down and find specific types of loops that you're looking for. For instance, if I want vocal loops, I can go into instruments like vocal, and then I can further drill down to the type of genre that I'm looking for or, or more. So I can tap on a loop like that and hear it. I can adjust the volume. And then I can just tap and drag that loop to the grid just like that to get it in there. Pretty simple. And then I could just play the loop just by tapping on it like we've done before. It really is that simple. Now let's talk about cut, copying, and pasting loops. So I have the loop in here. I'm gonna go into edit mode. It's gonna tap on the loop. I'm gonna select copy, tap on an empty grid space, select paste. Pretty simple, right? I'm gonna tap on that grid space again, select cut, tap somewhere else, select paste. And of course I can delete loops as well just by tapping on it and selecting delete, just like that. Moving loops. Moving loops is easy. Just go into edit mode and then tap, hold and drag the loop to your desired place in the grid. Now you can also move multiple loops at the same time. So I'm gonna just paste a few loops in random spots here. Now all you do is you tap and hold to move the first loop and then while still holding, tap the other loops that you wish to move and then drag like this. You'll see a little selection box around them indicating that they've been selected. Editing loops. You can also edit loops by going into edit mode, tapping on the loop that you wish to edit like this and then tapping edit. Now this allows you to edit the waveform directly so you can really drill down and get some really fine grain edits using that method. You can disable looping as well. Earlier I showed you the difference between a loop that keeps looping and a loop that just plays straight through. The loops that keep looping have the circles. So we can go in, go in into edit mode, tap the loop, tap settings, and then turn looping off like that and now it turns into a straight line and looping is disabled. You can change the loop length using the same methodology. So this loop has basically two bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So that's two bars, four beats in each bar for eight beats. So now we'll just go into edit mode, tap the loop, tap settings, tap length. You see it's eight beats, two bars of four beats each. So you see the two bars there, you can change it to one bar or four bars or three bars, however you wanna change it, or you can mix and match beats and bars if you want. But notice the difference now, much simpler loop than before with only four beats or one bar. Good to know. Adding effects. Now things are really about to get fun. Let me show you how to add effects. So first of all, we're gonna start off by playing a couple of loops together. 
Maybe I'll bust a flow for y'all. <laughs> Alright, let's try something. My name is Jeff Benjamin and money is a synonym I'm all about the Benjamins and Franklin is a friend of him Lose never winning them Drive to the hole and I'm hanging on the rim in them Dudes getting envious, laughing and I'm serious Video so cold that I'm making them delirious Bold and I'm diligent Holla at your boy if you know that I'm the realest And hit the like button if my flow caught you slipping man Oh, you know that I got, I got You know that I got my name is Jeff Benjamin, money is a synonym All about the Benjamins and Franklin is a friend in him Lose never winning Lose never winning Lose never winning But it's all fun though, I mean as you can see this is a pretty powerful app Using the effects along with it brings out even more potential More opportunities to really make the beat, make the song your own uh, and I'm just going to play for you guys just to show you what this thing's capable capable of just on a whim. So just watch and enjoy. Really spices things up with the repeater. Really like that. But you can take it even one step further. You can actually use the accelerometer to add effects to your creation. I'm going to show you that here in just a second. So I'm going to turn the accelerometer on for both pads. You can see as I move the iPad Pro, the effects change to correspond with its location on the effects pads. Pretty awesome. So you can really actually play your music, literally. What do you guys think? Leave a comment below if you're really digging this. And make sure you leave a thumbs up if you like this. Leave a thumbs up if you're surprised that I had a little flow in me. Just a little bit. But we're going to keep going with this tutorial. We're going to keep it moving. But I just, you know, after you get in the zone, you just want to keep going. But let's keep it moving a little bit. Let's talk about something else now. Using virtual drums. Now, you don't always want to go in and play your own drums. Sometimes it would be nice if you could just have drums that play themselves. And you can do that by adding a new instrument instead of a loop and then selecting the drummer option. This adds a virtual drummer to your beat grid. And then you can just create your own drum loop uh, using the various options available on the virtual drummer and you can just choose a different style You can choose what type of instruments are included uh, And all sorts of little options and sliders you can navigate to create your own unique sound right there on the fly This is really cool because it's original and it's extremely quick and extremely efficient And you can always go back to the main beat grid at any time just tap the little beat button here beat grid button you can go back to your beat grid and then you can also go back to the drummer and edit the drums whenever you like and that's really nice to have when you're in the midst of making a song all right now let's talk about recording a song this is the part that a lot of you are probably interested in recording an actual track uh, so I'm going to select chill as like a bass template and I'm going to build a song from this chill template so I'm just going to press record the metronome comes in and then I can just literally build a song from the instruments that are available on the grid. So you can see the song is recording. But I have not rehearsed this beforehand at all. The nice thing about live loops is that you can literally just build on the fly, create something original on the fly. So let's listen in.
add some effects, spice things up a bit. And it's not going to sound perfect, but I'm just giving you guys a demonstration on what it's like to record. Okay, so the song is recorded. Now let's play it back by pressing the play button. You can hear it starts off just like it did when we started recording. Super simple, super easy. All right, now I'm gonna show you how to view the song's waveform. The song we just recorded will have a waveform, so you can see it by tapping the waveform button right here. And you can see the track and the playhead move across the timeline. And the nice thing about this is that you can actually edit each of these waveforms. You can cut them up, you can slice them, you can crop them, do anything you want, delete them outright if you want to. But this really gives you some fine grain control over your song. And you can even see the effects there that are applied. You can scroll through the timeline like this. So say I didn't like the beginning of that effect, well I can always go back and simply crop that effect, drag it back using a little handle, just like that. Pretty cool, huh? Next up we're gonna talk about fading a song. When you get to the end of a song, you're gonna notice that it ends abruptly, like this. That's no good, it ends too abruptly. When you export it, it's gonna sound weird when it comes to an end. So all you need to do is tap the little wrench icon at the top right hand corner of a track and then enable the fade switch. And that way you can fade out just like that. Exporting a song. So once you finish your masterpiece, tap the select button in the song picker, tap your song, tap the share button, and you have tons of options to share. Of course, you can use the open in option, which will extract or basically convert it to an audio file of your choice to allow you to open in other apps. You can open directly in Dropbox, which will open just the band file, which allows you to share the actual uh, GarageBand source file. You don't usually wanna do that unless you wanna import into Logic or in GarageBand Desktop, or you can just tap to share with iCloud Drive. You can also share the original source file uh, from GarageBand that way, or you can export as a song. That's generally the option you're gonna wanna have, and then there's all these export options. You can export, uncompress, all that jazz. You can select the artist, composer, etc. and then once you're done, tap share. It will extract uh, the audio file, and then it will bring up the iCloud Drive interface for you to select your export location. I'm just gonna export it to the root. So I'm just tap that button there. And now it's ready to play over on iCloud Drive. So let's open up iCloud Drive on our iPad Pro and find our song. And here it is right here. Now let's play it. So that has been 20 basic tips for live loops on GarageBand 2.1. Again, I highly recommend the iPad Pro for GarageBand, but it works on the iPhone. It works on older iPads as well. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. This is Jeff with iDownloadBlog.